So if you didn't know it, Amber and I got away on vacation. Actually, it was our 20th anniversary. We hit Fairbanks, Alaska, and then San Francisco over in California. Of course, we, we left here at probably the most beautiful time of the year uh, as far as the leaves. So, <laughs> which somebody brought up. It's kind of funny. Somebody came to my training the other week, uh, the pneumatics training, and they're like, hey, are you the guy in the videos? I'm like, well, yeah, I am. He's like, oh, I didn't know you were in Roanoke, Virginia. So apparently I don't do a good job of promoting uh, the fact that, uh, yeah, um, I am in, lo I am locally, lo or I am located in Roanoke, Virginia. But yeah, we had a great time. I did put out one video about uh, uh, driving in, or dri driving, riding in a driverless car. But beyond that, um, I don't know, maybe uh, later I'll share something about it, but it was a really good time, a good restful time and i got a lot of crazy ideas for y'all coming up even though i'm the owner it's uh it's the same for me as it is for you know everybody else uh you come back from vacation it's like all right i gotta get back in the groove if i gotta get back on this uh yeah i mean is it gonna be called the road rig i gotta figure out its name but yeah i'm gonna try to run it in the november class which is right around the corner so while it functions, the next thing, you know, I gotta, I gotta work through all the brakes and it's not just good enough to have the brakes. Now we gotta work through the storyline. What does the machine do? What is its purpose? And then, you know, I've got at least kind of how, no, I don't need to know exactly how it's gonna react to the brakes because, you know, I need to practice my troubleshooting, but it, I need to be confident enough in that when we simulate the brakes, those guys aren't gonna, you know, uh, you know, part of the brakes, is for them to learn part of it is also to build their confidence so i've got to kind of figure out the order you know which ones are the easy brakes which ones focus on motors which ones focus on safety which one focuses on you know controlling devices over ethernet you know kind of identifying all those pieces so that'll be today's challenge plus uh yeah i've got to build out an ignition screen uh for this i'm gonna do this one in perspective uh so it's funny you know I'm usually flipping on my phone when they're doing, you know, the exercise and they're like, always like, he's got an app on his phone. He's doing something. And it's never been true. Really, I'm flipping on my phone because sometimes I'm just like, come on, y'all can do this. Y'all can do this. Y'all can do this. And I'm like, I just got to stay quiet the whole time. And so I'm usually just flipping. I'm not even, even my screen's not even on. I'm just acting like I'm flipping on my phone. So now I will be able to simulate the brakes by my phone because yeah, uh, at least as of now, this one doesn't have an HMI, and you know we couldn't really decide whether it needed an HMI. We also thought about making a full size HMI right on the top of it and making it a touch screen. We thought about some different things. We we're like, okay, let's run it as it is for a little bit and see how this works out. Of course, I forgot port two was supposed to be my power supply, which is a pool's power supply. And we're back to probably a swap byte issue because we have 345 and 6188. And those are a lot of values, definitely, because they are bouncing a lot. And if I go over to their documentation, then byte 0 and 1, which I am running this as integers, that should be our current. And then 2 and 3... That should be our voltage. Now when I come over here, I usually love this web search thing, but this is the first time I've seen, uh, I'm having an issue getting to it. I'm not really sure if that's an issue with pulls or if it's an issue with Turk, or maybe I don't have this set up to get to the internet. It could be that too. But I'm gonna go over here, and right there is the IODD file. I struggle to say an acronym still. But now we'll open that file up and we'll go ahead and extract that right there. And we should be able to go over here now and we're gonna load the IODD file. Go to my downloads and right there it is. We'll hop into here and we're looking for that one. Ooh, there was a PDF probably that would help me out. But okay, that gets me mainly so I can see the process data now. And yeah, so we should be 1.2 amps 
and 24.2 volts. But these are real numbers. So we're gonna have to do some fancy math probably on this. So we'll go back over here. Oops, go to the right program. And yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this. We're gonna copy it. And then we'll go over here to our IO link program. I did check to see if they had an AOI, but you know, I like to everybody to see a variety of things. And I don't know that I have one that we had to do any um, manipulation of real numbers on. So we're gonna do a copy instruction. That's gonna be over on the file miscellaneous tab. Ooh, should this be a, this one? And you know, uh, yeah, this one should be a CPS instruction. Because we are, no. This one would not be a CPS instruction, or would it be? Oh, I struggle with understanding exactly when that should be. Well, we're gonna try the C, well, and we talked in an earlier video, mainly nothing can interrupt the data when this is happening, but you know, being a single one, I don't know that that matters. Actually, you know, this is a really good one because normally when I'm doing this, it's usually 32 bits to get us to a decimal. I'm wondering if that is a real number or if they're just um, like offsetting by one. Probably if I read the words up here, it might would actually say something. I don't know. Too impatient to read the words, so let's just go try it out. Well, we're gonna go, where did I just go to? Oops, that's the safety routine. So I was gonna do a CPS instruction here, but first of all, could it be as simple as the bits are backwards? So we know we see a little bit of bounce on this. And if we go over to our controller tags, you know, I am seeing a slight bounce there. So I feel that they're in the right order and yeah, this is probably a real number. Now that's, you know, I gotta be honest, I'm stumped a little bit because this is an integer. I don't think I can do a move instruction. We may need to go find an AOI on this one, but let's try this anyway. So we're gonna grab an MOV instruction or MOVE instruction now. I'm just gonna move that to, we believe this is a current. So I'm just gonna put this as temp current and then we'll create it and very important I'm gonna make this a real number I think this is just gonna move that exact value though I don't think this works the way um, it does if we use the copy instruction but there's an issue I can't use the copy instruction because it's gonna grab part of data 22 I don't want to get too far into weeds on that, but let's just see what this does. I'm pretty sure it's going to say 345. Yeah, it says the exact same thing. So what I think I have to do is we're going to, we'll just copy and paste that. And then we're going to make this one a COP instruction. I'll move this to temp current int. That'd be an int? I think that would be an int. And so we'll create that as an int. Now we'll use that for our copy. Put that in the temp current. Ooh, that was a terrible, that's Timo current, but that's all right. If it works, then we'll fix that. We'll make that a length of one. And then just so we can see it here, I'm also gonna do another move instruction. And we're gonna move that value right back to that value. Just make sure I can see it right here and see if this actually works. Oh, that did not work at all. It gives a little bit of funkiness, but all right, I gotta figure out what's going on with this. You know, sometimes you just accidentally hit something and it's like, whoa, didn't even know that existed. But yeah, I was sitting in here trying to figure this out. And I happened to see this, it 
right out of the web server, you can get a really cool graph on your IO link data. Another job well done, Turk. So like most things, I grossly overcomplicated this thing. Um, then I actually got reading the words on the page. And so bit zero, or byte zero, has bits zero through seven in it. Big old assumption on my part, as I thought byte one would have bit eight. But it says negative there. Negative, 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 negative. And so this is another way that you can represent a decimal number, uh, and uh, yeah, so this is 2 to the negative 1, which is 0.5, and then we keep on going through all that. All that to say in the end, we take 2 times 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 2, that's 256, and all I needed to do was divide the original number by 256, and there's my current, and there is my voltage. We have a lot of third-party AOIs from Turk and Banner and Yamaha and various companies, but also wanted to show how we could do a custom AOI just to help us out. So I just wrote this PowerFlex data AOI. It's actually getting the data from the PowerFlex through a scattered read. And, you know, just to throw a little, actually it's not to throw, throw them for a loop. Uh, it's just easier to write if we open instructional logic on it. Then, yes, this one is written in structured text. And, you know, I think this is one of those that there, it was the cleanest way because right down here we got to do a lot of maths and um, a lot of moves. And you see you got some, some modes there. Oops. That one right there. And all, I was getting ready to say, the um, one thing I wanted to show is how compared to an array, we can mix double integers, integers. It should have been an integer. I made a mistake on that. I have to fix that one. All right, well, we managed to get through six breaks today, and at least the the OG, the unfamiliar machine, uh, it has 187 combinations. I don't know how many this actually has yet that we have identified, but yeah. We know it has at least 50, so we got a little ways to go. But you know, it's all little obstacles. Like all of a sudden we realized, oh yeah, everybody probably doesn't want to be sitting on the floor so it's like oh well we have no tables over here uh, and then yeah we were like oh well we have no well we have this screen but it's not a great screen and by the time you get eight people around it nobody can see so now we got to figure out a home for this screen so i really think we just need screens on all of the walls in the plc lab y'all should put that in the comments and tell amber that yeah we need more screens in here